Chang Xiang Si or Missing You Forever. It's a very popular poetic form. Many great poets from the Tang and Shang dynasties composed the poems in this form. David and I have translated and analyzed several poems in this form. So far, all the poems are about the sadness or sorrow of being separated from the loved ones. However, although poems celebrating happiness of romantic love are uncommon, they do exist. So today, I'm going to translate a poem about the joy of romantic love. I'm Dr. Gao, a philosopher obsessed with poetry. If you like the content of my videos, please click the like button and subscribe my channel. I also offer one-to-one -one online lessons about classical Chinese poetry, philosophies, or medical texts. If you would like to read this text with me, please contact me. Here's my email address. Now, let's go back to the poem I'm translating today. This poem was composed by a poet from the Southern Song Dynasty named Kang Yuzhi. We don't know when he was born, but we do know that he was active between 1127 and 1158 AD. Kang Yuzhi first obtained his fame by submitting an essay in the title of Zhong Xing Shi Che. All the ten strategies for dynasty rejuvenation around 1127. However, although this essay brought him fame among the scholar officials of the time, the Emperor Zhao Go did not take his advice or grant him any official position. Kang Yuzhi was quite disappointed and joined the then premier Qin Hui and become one of his yes-men. Qin Hui was known as one of the evilest men in Chinese history because he not only framed and murdered one of the most loved heroes of China, Yue Fei, but also managed to lead the downfall of the Southern Song Dynasty. I might tell the story of Yue Fei in the future and translate one of his poems. If you visit Hangzhou today, you can still find the temple of Yue Fei and Qin Hui kneeling in front of the temple. Kang Yuzhi, as a yes man of Qin Hui, certainly faced a lot of criticism during and after his lifetime. When Qin Hui died in 1155 AD, Kang Yuzhi and many of Qin Hui's followers were either persecuted or demoted. Kang was put in prison but was pardoned three years later, and he died soon after that. We can certainly question Kang Yuzhi's moral integrity, he probably had none. But one must acknowledge his poetic talent. I read many of his poems, and they are beautiful and elegant. Now, let me read the poem in Chinese first. Nan gao feng, bei gao feng, yi pian hu guang yan ai zhong, chun lai chou sha nong, lang yi nong, qie yi nong, you bi che qing lang ma chong, xiang feng jiu li shong. Now, let's look at the shang qie, or the first part of the poem. 南高峰,北高峰,一片湖光烟霭中,春来愁煞浓。南 means southern, 高 means high, 峰 means summit, 北 means northern, 高 means high, 峰 means summit or peak. 南高峰 literally means the southern high summit. However, we can't translate this line as it is because we need to have a verb to complete a sentence. So David and I changed the order of the characters from Nan Gao Feng to Nan Feng Gao and translate the line accordingly. I think this is a clever trick. The poet made it very clear the poem is about the West Lake 
at the Hangzhou. Here is an ancient painting of the two summits mentioned here. There are two summits that are often shrouded in the mist, making the scenery mysterious and magical. I have mentioned the cultural significance of rain in my earlier video. Here's the link to the video clip. Rain, especially the light rain, is often presented as the most romantic time in classical Chinese literature because when it rains, yin and yang, heaven and earth come together. Magic happens and life is created. Nothing can be more romantic than the light rain in Chinese literary imagination. The most famous romantic poem composed in modern poetry was by Dai Wang Shu in the title of Yu Xiang. I might make a video about this poem in the future. Now, let's go back to the poem. Yi means wan. Pian is a major unit as in the phrase of yi pian wa, a tile, yi pian tian di, a piece of land, etc. It is often used as a unit for something flat and spreading out, such as the tile or land. So we translate the pian as hu. Hu means lake. Huang means light. Hu guang means lake scene. Yi pian hu guang refers to the surface of the lake reflecting light as a scenic sight. So David and I translate the phrase as the whole lake. Yan ai means misty haze. Zhong means middle. The line of yi pian hu guang yan ai zhong is also without a verb. So we just added the verb in our translation. We also add a clause of between them to make it clear the scenery this poem is describing. Chun means spring, Lai means calm, Chou means sad, Sa means kill, Nong means me. So the three lines can be translated as the southern summit is high, the northern peak is high. Between them, the whole lake is shrouded in the misty haze. Spring comes, but I'm sad. Lang yi nong, qie yi nong, you bi che qing lang ma chong, xiang feng jiu li song. Lang usually means young man, but it is also used by young woman to refer to her love. This poem takes the voice of a young woman describing a lovely encounter with her lover. So David and I translate it as you. Yi means intention. Nong means thick. But when yi and nong are used together, they mean affection as in the phrase of nong qing mi yi, meaning sweet affection. So lang yi nong can be translated as your sweet affection. Qie is a self-reference here, so we translate it as I. Yi nong means sweet affection again. You means greased. Bi is the cover of a carriage. Che means carriage. You bi che was a carriage covered by greased clothes, as shown in this painting. Qing literally means light, but here it is used to describe the feelings the young woman feels at this time. She knows that she is about to meet her lover so that her mood is light and happy. Even the carriage feels light as if it could fly. Lang, again, we translate it as you. Ma means horse. Chong means gentle pie boat. The line you bi che qing lang ma chong allures to a romantic encounter between a young lady and a young man. A daughter of a rich merchant from Xiling of Hangzhou named Shu Xiao Xiao ran into a handsome young man named Yuan Yu. She was so attracted to him that she sent him a poem to meet around her neighborhood. They quickly fall in love with each other. 
Unfortunately, they were not able to marry each other because of the class gap between their family background. She was from a merchant background, while he was from a scholar official family. But her poem survived until today. Here's the Chinese version of the poem and our translation: "Qie cheng you bi che lang qi qing chong ma, he chu jie tong xin xi ling song bai xia." I'm in a carriage covered with greased cloth, and you are on a gentle piebald horse. Where should we tie our knot of love? Under the pine trees at Western Hill, there is no historical record of Shu Xiaoxiao. However, there are many legends about her. The poem I just cited is a folk song from a collection of poetry published between 534 to 548 A.D. during the Southern Dynasty. The time Shu Xiaoxiao became really famous was late Tang Dynasty, when several poets composed poems about her, including Bai Juyi, Li He, Du Mu, and many others. By the Shang Dynasty, Shu Xiaoxiao had become a legendary heroine who risked her life to pursue romantic love. There was even a scholar official who dreamed of Shu Xiaoxiao while traveling to Hangzhou and later died at his post at Hangzhou. This story was later adapted into a full-length novel in the title of Qian Tang Yi Meng, or A Strange Dream by the Qian Tang River, telling a story of a young scholar official who fell in love with Shu Xiaoxiao in his dream and soon died to join Shu Xiaoxiao. Shu Xiaoxiao's story was kept alive by many poems, novels, and plays during the subsequent Yuan, Ming, and Qing dynasties until today. If you visit Hangzhou today, you will find Shu Xiaoxiao's tomb by the West Lake. The story I told earlier is one of the many stories about her. Now let's go back to the poem. Kang Yuzi said Shu Xiaoxiao's poem to indicate the young woman was just like Shu Xiaoxiao, who was deeply in love with her lover. Xiang Feng means mate. Jiu means nine. Li means mile. Shong means pine tree. Jiu Li Shong was a road located next to Ling Yin Shi or the Ling Yin Temple, where a former governor planted many pine trees. Because of the beautiful sceneries and the cool shade provided by the pine trees, this road became a popular place for lovers to meet. It was the Chinese version of the lover's line. The three lines can be translated as, "Then you show up with your sweet affection. So do I. I'm in a carriage covered with greased cloth, and you're on a gentle piebald horse. We meet by the Nine Mile Pine Road." This poem is quite unusual. It starts by painting a rather romantic scene of mountain peaks shrouded in misty haze in the spring, but the lady was miserable. However, her mood is suddenly lifted when she knows that her lover is waiting for her at the Nine Mile Pine Road. She is so happy that even her heavy carriage feels light. She is just like the beautiful young lady Shu Xiaoxiao. Before her, rushes to meet the man she loves so much. As you can see, even though this poem takes the form of "Chang Xiang Shi" or "Missing You Forever," the content of the poem is not related to the form. It is not about longing or missing the loved one. Instead. It celebrates the joy of romantic love. This is quite common to most of the qi pai or the title of poetic forms. When a qi pai or a poetic form first appear, 
Its title and content are often closely related. We have read the poems composed by Li Bai, Bai Juyi, Lin Bu, and Chen Dongfu. All of these poems, in the form of Changxiang Shi, are the ones expressing the longing or love sickness for their loved ones separated from them. However, in Kang Yizhi's poem, the emotion presented here is joy and happiness, although it starts a little gloomy. As time goes by, the title of a form becomes less and less related to the content of the poem. I'm planning to translate a few more poems in the title of Changxiang Shi. Their content might or might not be related to the title. You can also let me know if you know any poetic form that you would like me to find a poem for you and translate it for you. If you are new to my channel, please check out my other videos on classical Chinese poetry, philosophies, or medical literature. If you like the content of these videos, please click the like button and subscribe my channel. I also offer one-to-one -one online lessons. If you would like to read the original text with me, please contact me. Here's my email address. Thanks for watching my video. I'll see you next time. Thank you.